and welcome to the Newspapers of the Week in Review. This is a show where we look at the weekly newspapers. My name is Mike Mendoza and each week I'll be here at this time with a special guest to look in detail at the stories that are hitting the headlines in the Nationals. Well today I'm delighted to welcome back as my guest reviewer, journalist Simon Robb from the Herald Group of Newspapers. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Well, it's a pleasure and welcome back and thank you for returning. Um, Part of your group, the Herald Group, is, is the, uh, the Scotsman, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Part, uh, it's under Johnston Press, so we cover uh, the Scotsman as well. Quite a major paper. It is a, it's a major paper of ours, yes. You going up there next? Uh, maybe, you never know. Maybe that's where I'm heading. So you should work your way up the ladder between each, each uh, publication. <laughs> I suppose, you, you, yeah, you can do. You can move around and yeah, go up and, yeah, um, the Scotsman the could be the goal. You yeah, never that's, know. that's the big one. <laughs> OK, <clears throat> and let's look at some of the, the stories in the papers today. Uh, this one is actually is in the local papers, but it's, it really is covered nationally yeah, as well. Um, several headlines in the paper. Uh, ban for player who headbutted referee and footballers from lower classes, not role models. This uh, brings me back to the Ched Evans case, uh, mm. the footballer, of course, who served a sentence for, for raping uh, a woman and who just can't find work. I, I suppose the question really is, A, are these people role models? A lot of people call, keep using that word, mm. role model. And B, once you've served a sentence for a crime, should you not be able to go back to work again after? Well, I think if you're a footballer, um, you are somewhat of a role model. You're going to have a lot of young people, a lot of avid football players watching you. And when you do something like this, like headbutt a referee, or you know, with this uh, rape case that took place, when you see these players return to the pitch, you know, you can understand people concerned about what message that's given out. Um, and obviously, with Ched Evans, is struggling to find work. So there's a lot of people out there who don't want to see him mm. just as easily finding a job again after what he did. You know, should the punishment continue beyond the sentence? Is the question. But surely that, that, that's what it's all about. It's, it's rehabilitation. It is. Uh, it, it's going to prison, serving your time, serving your sentence, and then coming back to lead a normal life again. Mm. But you know, sometimes when you screw up, uh, unfortunately. Um, and especially if you're in the public eye, maybe it's not a good thing to return back onto people's TV screens or in the papers. Um, but you can understand, you know, obviously people, essentially you've served your sentence, you're a bit rehabilitated and you should be able to find work afterwards. I mean, I can understand the story about, uh, you know, ban for player who had a referee. Mm. You just do that on the pitch. No, you don't do it. No. It will make other kids want to, want to, want to do it. Uh, I mean, there's a number of referees I think I'd like to headbutt at times, but uh, that's beside, beside the point. <laughs> um, but I, I'm quite concerned how the, uh, it's almost like, almost like um, the, the public are deciding you're, you're going to be guilty the rest of your life. Yeah, obviously. And I think, it, you know, again, this is, it's, it's going to be tougher on people who are in the public eye. You've got a lot of fans, you've got a lot of followers, and they're going to be very upset when things like this happen. And people are going to be worried about what it's, how it's going to reflect on our youth and our impressionable people in the society. And, you know, maybe it shouldn't be so easy to find a job back in TV or back in sports and things like that when you do uh, acts like this. Okay, let's move on to almost a similar topic in fact. Um, again, it's back with, with rape, it's back with uh, going to prison and, and, and the way people look at things and role models. This is the headline in the mirror we're using today, but it's also going to be a headline in virtually every paper. It's been discussed on radio and yes, television. Yeah. A judge blames girl of 16 for affair with a teacher of 44. Uh, a sex abuser groomed by a teenager walks free. Uh, the amazing thing is, this is a judge making these comments. It was, yeah, a female judge. And uh, it was quite, she's made some quite controversial statements calling this girl obsessed and things like that. Um, the idea is that, you know, is she just to blame because she's the age of consent? But then obviously the argument is, should we have to worry about our teachers engaging in relationships like that with the students? Um, so do teachers need to be educated on this more and students as well you know do parents need to worry you can understand why there's an uproar at the moment and there's like even this morning on the radio I could hear uh, people um, concerned and saying well at the end of the day um, whether she's 16 or not uh, teachers shouldn't be allowing this to happen. Because sometimes you hear about mature students as well having uh, affairs with their, with their lecturers. Mm, I, can, I imagine it happens mm. a fair amount, you know, and maybe this could be used as an example to kind of readdress uh, the relationship between uh, students and teachers. Yeah, so I mean there's a lot of obsessions I think must be with, between students and, and teachers at times, but it's up to the teacher to be strong enough. I don't know if they're trained, but they should be trained to, to find a way of saying no, enough yeah. is enough. I'm teacher, you're students. You'd like to think a lot of it is common sense, but you know, maybe they do need the extra training. You know, I mean, obviously I'm not reflecting this on all teachers, but just on this case in particular, 
uh, maybe there there does need to be some education for the teachers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was listening to a program actually on the radio, I think yesterday, and it was a, I think one of the um, representatives for the teachers' association or teachers' union mm. uh, was saying that teachers are trained uh, mm. in this, not to get involved. Well, if they are trained, why are things like this happening? Is the yeah. question. You know? But you know, you saw, although you say the girl is sixteen is this age of consent, mm. uh, sixteen and forty-four. Yeah, obviously. And the, the, the teacher is not just a teacher. There's someone that they, they're a role model. There's someone they look up to. There's mm -hmm. someone the students do place a lot of trust in their teachers. You know, should they have to be worried about whether that trust becomes something else, you know? Does it worry you that judges will come out with, with statements like, like we've read here? Um, I mean, it doesn't, it, I suppose it does concern a lot of people. Um, I mean, it does pose a big question here, obviously, about how this is viewed because uh, we're looking at issues like obviously students, tu um, student teacher relationships, age of consent, it just, it, she almost makes it seem like these lines are quite blurred. Mm. Maybe it does need to be addressed more. I, I think I agree with you, 100%. Okay, let's move on now to the next story. Uh, this is uh, about the Prime Minister being accused of being a coward, really, yeah. uh, saying no Greens, no television debate. I mean, this is crazy. What is the man doing? Yeah, I heard that he was running scared or something, uh, essentially, because the, the Greens haven't been given sort of a platform in this debate. The Prime Minister is saying, well, well, I won't turn up then. But obviously people want to hear from the Prime Minister. So it's an interesting argument because obviously supporters of the Green Party are probably, you know, saying like this is good because, you know, we want to be heard as well. We want to have a, a voice against, you know, up against the other parties like uh, UKIP and uh, all that. So, you know, why, why can't they be there? And it's just quite interesting that the Prime Minister has decided to take a stance on this, quite a strong stance, and yeah. stick to his guns. But they're in a very minor, very minor party in Parliament. They, they are. One seat. They, they, they've got one seat. I mean, against the other major parties, they're at the bottom there, um, just below you, um, just below the Lib Dems, actually. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting argument. It's saying why is he concerned about the Greens? You know, obviously we've got all the other major parties there. Why can't he just take part? I, I assume UKIP will be there. I, I assume they should yeah. be, um, but it'll be interesting to find out what happens. It'll be interesting to see if he actually sticks to his guns. Yeah, him, but so. as I say, they've got one seat. I assume that, uh, again, George Galloway, uh, Respect Party, will be there. Yeah. Um, you've got the, the Scottish... Well, you've got uh, smaller parties, parties coming forward yeah. and saying, well, what, what about us then? You know, can, can we please uh, have... You have a never-ending line of uh, people... <laughs> yeah, they'll be talk. lining up around the corner. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely crazy. OK, the next story is... Uh, we're going to talk a bit more about... Uh, uh, the, the situation in Paris a bit later on, but the, the story I want to talk about, it says Charlie's Angel in, in the papers today. Uh, Defiant Brit sells 200 magazines in a village shop. Yeah. Um, this is a, a Muslim lady who owns a, a village shop, is selling the magazine that no one else would touch in the country. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people are calling her very brave for doing such a thing. Um, it's brave the, or foolish. Yeah, brave or foolish, you mm. know, what is it? I mean, because obviously people are worried that if they're going to put these magazines on the stand, are they going to become a target? Um, I mean, they, it already says that uh, Al-Qaeda chiefs uh, behind the massacre last week in Paris are saying that, you know, we should expect other atrocities if this is allowed on the shelves. And obviously this woman's decided to take a stand. She advertised it. She's already sold out. You know, people want to see this. I know they're selling on eBay for like 500 pounds really? each. Yeah. Because 5 million copies were printed. Yeah, exactly. They so, all sold. Exactly. And, you know, and a lot of people are saying we should stay, take a stand. It should be out there. It should be in the public eye. It should be in the news. And other people are saying, well, look, maybe we should draw a line. You know, we need to be careful. And, you know, it's a very difficult argument, it's a very sensitive thing, and it's, it's interesting to see that one person amongst the rest has decided to stand up and... I mean, I, I can understand that. that a cartoon can be offensive to, to people of certain religions, mm. um, but to kill people over it... Yeah, I mean, obviously that shouldn't reflect the whole religion, and maybe we need to keep in mind that, you know, we do want to respect these religions and that, and we don't want to pigeon them whole with people that are causing these atrocities. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Um, it's interesting that the most of the British media won't touch you with a barge ball. No, um, I mean, it is interesting. And <coughs> I think, you know, obviously it was the media that was attacked. So does the media want to keep putting it out there? Yeah. So everyone's are being- Are they all scared? Maybe they are all scared or they're just trying to be very careful, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, you've got, you've got The Sun, for example, who's always been in your face, well, yeah. not scared of anybody, but they were one of the first papers to say they will not do this. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting. But at the end of the day, the news is still out there. People have access to the internet. So it's just, it's not something that's been necessarily covered up. It's just people are trying to tread very carefully. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I wonder if it's a question of being scared or whether it is respect. Mm, true. I, I, if it's because they're scared, 
because of the situation, uh, terrorism has won. I think, well, the, the people I'm sure are naturally going to be worried, but I do think there is also a level of respect as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I noticed yesterday in Sky, on Sky News, someone suddenly held up the, the front cover of the magazine. And they, they, they quickly the, moved the yeah, camera away did. from it yeah. and asked them to, you know, not to do that again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a very sensitive area at the moment and it would just be uh, interesting to see how it's going to unravel. But the news, regardless, is still out there. People yep. still okay. We'll be happened. coming back to that a lot more. Uh, sadly, time for a break, or fortunately time for a break. Uh, we're going to look at a lot more of the other stories that are hitting the headlines in our country and beyond. Uh, this is the newspaper, The Week in Review, with me, Mike Mendoza. My special guest is journalist Simon Robb. We have so many other stories to talk about. Of course, we'll stay with the terrible uh, goings on in, in France over the last week yeah. as well. We'll be back after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the newspapers and the week in review with me, Mike Mendoza. My guest, the returning journalist Simon Robb from the Herald Group of Newspapers. Thanks very much. For and uh, you had a cup of coffee, you had a cup of tea, you've had water. Uh, I'm all caffeined up, it's ready worth to going go. Back again, isn't yeah, it, really? it is. <laughs> okay, let's look at uh, some more of the stories that hit in the national papers today. Uh, the first one is Bronze Lady, anger at Maggie Bust in the Falklands. This is the Argentinians are not very happy about a, a statue that's being put up in uh, the Falkland Islands for Margaret Thatcher. No, I mean it's quite interesting. Um, I mean. Obviously, they've they've put that there um, in honour of you know defending the islands uh, back in the early 80s, and it, it's it's stirred up a, a lot of controversy. Uh, you've got this bust there of uh, Margaret Thatcher. Obviously, she doesn't have a lot of fans, but you can understand that it's um, it's quite sensitive towards the Argentinians, uh, considering the conflict and everything. Um, you know, uh, but I don't know. Face it, they lost. Huh? They've got to face it, they lost. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously that's, that's in the history now that they, they lost, but um, you can expect, you know, the, the fact, I mean, I remember that someone was saying that, you know, are they rubbing it in by putting your bust there of uh, Margaret Thatcher? But, you know, it's something that a lot of people are proud of as well, you yeah. know, that we, we stood for it. And, uh, you know, it's just something there to commemorate it. It's, I think this sort of thing, uh, Margaret Thatcher herself, and uh, she's always going to spit the public, isn't she? All the time. Even in death. Okay, uh, this is a story in The Sun, and I know that uh, a lot of people I work with love The Sun. Uh, and this story says, Welcome to the Green Republic of Right On. Mm. Uh, Eco's run one town, and this is what it's like. This is a story really rubbing it into Brighton. Oh, it is. Yeah, they've been a little bit mean. <laughs> Not easy being green. Just ask the people of Brighton. The seaside town is awash with loony policies. Uh, proposals such as traffic calming sheep, uh, meat-free Mondays, uh, transgender toilets. Uh, the, uh, the I mean, the story there is only that shows uh, travellers, shows rubbish mm. piling up in the streets, and it shows uh, nowhere to park. Yeah, I mean, it does paint a very extreme picture. Uh, it does make it sound like we're all up in arms here, which isn't necessarily the case. But you can understand some of the policies have not been in favour of everyone. Obviously, um, the parking fees, things like that, reducing the speed limits to 20 miles per hour in certain roads and things like that. Um, I think loony policies is a bit mean, um, you know, and it's because we are quite a diverse um, community here and we do, we're very proud of the fact that, that we have such a strong LGBT community and introducing things like transgender toilets is quite progressive, I think, but obviously there are certain things here, especially with recycling and issues like that. They're a very hot topic at the moment. And um, yeah, the Greens have not had a very pretty picture painted of them across the uh, rest of the UK. Okay, so many stories I want to get in. Mm. Uh, the next one, Pint of Order. Uh, it's pub landlord versus Farrar in the election. The, uh, this is, is uh, yeah. pub landlord Al Murray, who's a, who's mm. a very funny comedian, yeah. uh, who now says he's going to stand against Farage at Thanet. Well, he's promised us a, uh, a penny a pint mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, definitely, I'd vote for him. Um, it's quite interesting, talking really. Policies, it's, yeah, yeah <laughs> talking about loony policy. Mm. He's, he's sort of making, uh, obviously, a mockery um, of Nigel Farage and stepping up against him. You know, um, Al Murray's talking about um, bricking up uh, the Channel Tunnel. Um, you know, he's uh, making the pound worth one pound ten. You know, he's talking about all these sort of uh, common sense policies that he's going to put forward. I mean, it's obviously uh, this video has gone viral, I'd imagine, on the internet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he, you know, he's obviously having a laugh. 
but it'd be quite interesting to see how many people actually take his side on this. I mean, obviously. And he really is having a go at uh, UKIP. And, and he Mars. is. He's, he's got making the, a mockery the pound of it. sign drawn in a very funny way as part of his logo. He is. Uh, and instead of UKIP, it says FKUP. It does. Yes, exactly. Um, so you know, it, it's it's a very funny, it's a very amusing campaign, and it's just it would be very interesting uh, to see how this goes. I don't know if he's actually officially going to stand I don't or know. not. I think, it just a, seems, I think it's a joke. It, it is a joke, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see if it does. Yeah, very very funny. Okay, the next one. Uh, you know, you've got to talk about this. Uh, Paris and the world tribute to the dead, uh, united in fight against terrorism. Uh, mm. Je suis four million. Uh, another story, that's for Charlie. Um, you know, the, the headlines were throughout the country and, and on television. It really took us over. A most I mean, awful thing to happen. It is, and I mean, this is something that's gone on for over, like those, the brothers were on a rampage for quite a long while. Um, it's like a 54 hour you know, reign of terror that they had on Paris. Um, and it's, it's very nice to see so many people come together and it's so it's so nice to see you know Paris and France come together and all the nations surrounding it you know standing by and you know and I think you know with such atrocity, atrocities happening here it is nice to see that you know people are still taking a stand I mean you know it's like this one woman's stand that she's with selling copies of it yes, yeah. from a shop which we've already discussed and that and you know this is going to be in the news for a while Okay, uh, I, th I thought also it was, it was a nice sight to see uh, Francois Hollande walking uh, w with with those millions of people, yeah. uh, with with the leader of Israel on one side, the leader of the Palestinians the other side. It, it does make a very well. nice statement. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it'll work. We hope. Uh, the next one, my old boss, Kelvin McKenzie, writing uh, in the papers today. Uh, a Charlie Hebdo here would put Farage at number 10. Yeah. Bring all the racists out? It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's quite an interesting statement. I don't know how true that is, but um, it's because obviously he thinks that we're just a step away of being pushed towards the UKIP direction with obviously what's been happening in Paris. If something like this happened here, would people's suddenly mindset change? Would we suddenly be behind UKIP and their policy? But I don't know how true that is. Really. You, you've seen it in West Sussex, you've seen it in Worthing. Mm. Uh, the UKIP have come in very strongly they have, there. Yeah. Second biggest party in West Sussex. That's correct. Um, yeah. It hasn't happened in Brighton, funny enough. No, oh, it you, hasn't. Is it happening nationally? Um, I think, I don't know. I mean, for instance, in Brighton, you can understand you've got, there's some rogue councillors that make really silly statements on behalf of the UKIP about, you know, storm, like gay marriage causing storms and things like that. I mean, it is enough to not take the party very seriously. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why it's not happening in places like Brighton and that. Uh, and beyond the rest, I don't know. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I don't know how true it is that if we had something like this, it would push UKIP to the front. Um, but it is an interesting debate in the least. Oh, I wonder if, if Farage would actually cash in on this himself anyway. It's a horrible thought in a way mm. that you could cash in on something like this, but yeah, you never know. I say it, bring the, it will bring the racists out of the woodwork. Mm, it I'm would, sure. yeah. Okay, the next story. Uh, I, I know you're a great fan of uh, Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we had the situation, of course, last week of, of Ken Morley, who was a horrific character when he went in there. It's just. And made himself even worse. I don't know why he. It, it's almost like I haven't watched uh, Big Brother in a long time, but this seems to be the series that's bringing everyone back into it, you know, and it's not necessarily for the right reasons. I mean, you've got this man who's just said these vile things on TV and he's been I'm, very racist, hasn't he? But he's been very racist, mm. uh, he's been sexist, he's mm. been even accused by Perez of being homophobic as well. And it's just interesting to see that he lasted that long, actually. I'm surprised. And his wife has sort of kind of come to his aid saying, well, you know, all this swearing and everything he's picked up from Shakespeare and watching Breaking Bad and stuff like that. And it's like, OK, I don't think that's really an excuse. Um, but I'm glad to actually see him out of the house. Yes, I think a lot of people are. He was really groaning on people, wasn't he? He, he was. And I think, you know, it's quite a shame as well, because obviously people followed him on a TV. I think he was on Coronation Street. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really strange that we've suddenly seen this other side of him that's actually quite scary. Um, but this is what Celebrity Big Brother is all about, really, isn't it? What's your, what's your view on Paris Hilton, then? Um, that's not his real name, of course. Uh, no, no, it mustn't have been. Um, Perez Hilton, he's an interesting character. I kind of like him, but at the same time, he annoys me slightly mm. because he is sort of the centre of attention. I think he's on the right side, 
but I just think sometimes when someone's a bit too loud, it can get on your top. nerves. Yeah, a bit yeah. OTT. You, you were of his background. Mm, yeah. He, he did a blog did outing people was initially. <sighs> yeah, I mean, he did. And he's he's been also, you know, he's been called a bully, a uh, cyber bully mm. and everything else well, like you put, that. He put so sex tapes on there of uh, celebrities as well. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's sort of, yeah, he's not... It, it's quite interesting because obviously... Um, you want people to be able to give us the news about safety. And the thing is, unfortunately, that stuff kind of sells. So mm. he's kind of giving the public what they want. But at the same time, it's coming from the wrong place, really. Yeah, and there's a man who's had a hang up about Paris Hilton. So he changed his name to Paris Hilton. Yeah, he did. And it's gone down pretty well. I mean, people know the name now, don't they? <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, more so than ever. Uh, I think we've got a quick moment to get this in. Um, this, this again hit the headlines over the last few days. Uh, it was the front page of The Independent this week. The new anti Semitism survey of British opinion shows alarming degree of prejudice uh, against Jewish people in this country, probably the first time. It really, yeah, world. it really, really surprised me reading this because personally, I. I don't. I haven't experienced this. I mean, I'm not Jewish, but I haven't heard anything like this. So to to, to hear that this is actually going on in the country just makes me feel quite ignorant. Um, and it's quite interesting what the statistics state. Uh, state. It's almost like people are going back to a lot of the old stereotypes. They're even making like it says here. A further 13% of those surveyed in the poll commissioned by the campaign against anti. Semitism agreed that Jews talk about the Holocaust too much in order to get sympathy, which is just, I think is just a horrible statement to, to make. It's something that happened in history and I think should always be remembered. And I don't think you can accuse people of talking too much about it, especially trying to gain sympathy from it. And it's just a surprise to me that there is things like this happening. And maybe, again, it needs to boil down to education, starting with the youth and just making sure that, you know, we shouldn't be attacking other religions. Uh, and okay. for so such that's what we've got time for. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> thanks to you, Simon, Rob, for joining me today. We thanks hope to see you me. back here very, very soon. Please yeah, do. that'd be great. Thank you. Well, I'm back again, of course, next time for another edition of The Nationals and The Week in Review here on Latest TV with another special guest reviewer, and that's Councillor Mary Mears. In the meantime, have a great week. Bye for now.